Fallout 4 might appear to be less out-and-out -out weird than its predecessors, but although there's no wild wasteland perk or kooky insect-themed supervillains, there is still unmarked weirdness out there in the wasteland for you to stumble across when you're supposed to be finding your son or defending settlements for those needy Minutemen. I could really use your help. Yes, I'm sure you could, Preston, but I'm kind of busy right now telling these people about the freakiest corners of the Commonwealth that we've come across. Oh, and warning them about spoilers, obviously. The General Atomics Galleria is the shopping center of tomorrow today. Our wide array of stores are staffed entirely by the General Atomics line of robots. The General Atomics Galleria was originally intended to showcase the products of the General Atomics Company by demonstrating what a shopping district operated entirely by their line of robots would be like. It turns out what it would be like is extremely murdery. Error, unhandled exception in boxing module. Lethal protocols engaged. That's in the gym, where a boxing robot will try to murder you, but what about the diner? Actually, I'm not hungry after all. Nonsense! At Handy Eats, serving you is our code. Maybe the shops will be more accommodating. The customer is always right, right? Ah, you ruined it! Oh good, I found you. I'll go submit a complaint to the General Atomics outlet. This can't be how these things are supposed to work. Alright you commie bastards, how do you like this? <coughs> no, apparently it is. If you like, you can activate the gallery as grand reopening protocol, which makes things significantly less murderific around here, but I think I'll just get a cup of coffee to go and be on my way. There's no way that can go wrong. All of our coffee is heated to a perfect 200, 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You might want to stand back. At first glance, Dunwich Borers seems like a great place to work, what with its minimally fatal happy hours and apparently tragic children's picnics. But venture deeper underground and you'll discover that everything is not as it seems. As you descend into the earth, that's when the flashbacks start. Innocuous at first, then taking a real swerve into dark Lovecraftian rituals. It's almost like this raider's journal that we found earlier was trying to tell us something. An audio diary from someone called Tim Shoots sheds more light on things and reveals that those guys were down here digging for something specific, an unholy ritual knife, and keeping it from the rest of the team. My gut tells me to figure out something's going on down here sooner rather than later. Please advise. I'm sure that worked out well for Tim Shoots, though. Right, Tim? Oh, Tim. Why did they want you so badly? <laughs> A small disagreement. They objected to my hobby of collecting their heads. After the bombs drop, there are no movies, no TV, and the only reliable radio station is hosted by Travis trying to sound cool. That was Big Maybell, with a whole lot of shaking going on. And when you're as big as Maybell is, there is a whole lot of shaking going on. Yeah, you're gonna need a hobby. But maybe choose a different hobby to Pikmin, owner of the Pikmin Gallery, whose favorite pastime is being a serial killer and painting weird-ass paintings using radar blood. As you can see, his work is... challenging. I don't like this. Yes, the bold, grotesque imagery really brings to mind the work of Francis Bacon or a young Hannibal Lecter. Anyway, it seems Pickman's work has finally caught up with him as a bunch of raiders are here to end his artistic career once and for all. Now you can hunt and torture our people to your heart's content. I'm gonna enjoy killing you. You fools, that'll only increase the value of his work. Anyway, help Pickman out of this jam and he'll reward you with a big knife. Yeah, really sticking with that theme, hey Pickman. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that no outside food is to be brought on campus as of this week. This goes for faculty as well as students. Suffolk County Charter School was a well-off private school that started to run low on funding. This was when they accepted an offer from the government to take part in a program that would replace all the students' meals with a nutritious food paste that was meant to increase their intelligence. There it is, appetizing. What it actually did was make the kids irritable, restless and pink, apparently. Now that you mention it, there is something a bit odd about the ghouls you find in this school. To those complaining, I will repeat. There are absolutely no psychological or physical side effects from participation in the NAPP. Any observed effect is assuredly psychosomatic, and possibly related to a lack of trust in the government. Hey, whatever you say, Principal. At least there's the annual Glee Club bake sale coming up. I'll be able to get something tasty there, right? Remember, actual baked goods are forbidden on school grounds, so they will be selling colorful cups for your food paste. I hate this school. I'm Theodore Collins, 
and I run Long Neck Lukowski's, purveyor of the finest canned food in all the Commonwealth. Long Neck Lukowski's Cannery is a meat cannery in the Commonwealth that makes an excellent first impression by having you walk into the middle of a conversation between the owner, Theodore, and a trader complaining about her customers getting sick from his wares. I'm sorry, but ten cans is all I can commit to right now. It was selling like crazy for a while there, but there's been talk about people getting sick. So, how many cans can I put you down for? None? Okay, well there's still work to be done here, helping Theodore clear the mole rats out of the factory. Only he seems weirdly keen that you stay out of the basement. Yeah. Welcome to have a look. But uh, stay out of the old basement. It isn't safe down there. Probably because if you head down there, you'll find out that Theodore has not only been filling out his canned meat with mole rat, but also with feral ghoul meat from the hordes found down in the cellar. Gross, Ted. Hey, ghouls are no different than any other dumb animal. They're an untapped food source. Hey, you should let the principal at Suffolk County Charter School know. The name's Jacob, and I run this town. Glad you passed the test. Our door's always open to good quality people. Covenant is a suspiciously intact looking settlement that won't let you in until you do a psychological test to prove you aren't a robot. Yeah, we've all seen Blade Runner, guys. You are approached by a frenzied scientist who yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? Also, they seem to let me in regardless of how willfully unstable I try to appear. Your grandmother invites you to tea but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill someone. What do you do? I'd ask for a minigun, so I can do the job right. That's probably because, behind his perfect facade, Covenant is actually a front set up to kidnap unsuspecting synths and spirit them away to a compound where they can be experimented on and tortured in the hopes of developing a test to find out who's a secret robot. I've dedicated my life to devising a test to detect these hidden synths, to root them out so they can be extinguished. And it took you that long to just copy the questions from Fallout 3's GOAT. A frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? Busted! So, negative points are kidnapping, torture, and synth genocide, but on the plus side, free lemonade? No tricks, no gimmicks, just the best lemonade in Covenant, free to our special guests. Something isn't right. We should get out of here. It makes sense that someone should repurpose the old Fallon's department store parking garage since the sole function of cars in the post-apocalypse is to explode when you least want them to. Oh, I was thinking more defensible fortress or multi-level marketplace, but yeah, Death Maze in the style of the Saw horror movie franchise is good too. There's no sight of whoever set up this maze, although I'm going to guess that they owned a factory for bathroom scales. Either that or it's the Riddler. Still, good to see him keeping busy. Make it to the top and you'll find the Trapmaster's quarters along with two reward cages. You can only pick one though, then sit and watch as the other reward sash is incinerated, then blown up. And yet still a less painful experience than using a London car park. Those were the places in the Commonwealth where Fallout 4 got a lot weirder than we were expecting. Let us know if your favourite didn't make it, and like and subscribe for more Fallout from outside Xbox. Thanks for watching!